Night owls. They have more fun, they get more done, and according to some studies, make more money than their early bird friends. But all that late night living and sleeping in might come with a price. A new study out of South Korea has found that night owls are sacrificing their health in the name of burning the midnight oil. According to one of the authors of that study, regardless of lifestyle, people who stayed up late faced a higher risk of developing health problems like diabetes or reduced muscle mass than those who were early risers. So what is it about staying up late at night that's so bad for night owls? And what should that tell us about the way to live a truly healthy lifestyle? Joining me now for more on this is Dr. Mitchell Gaynor, founder and president of Gaynor Integrative Oncology and author of the soon-to-be-released book, Gene Therapy Plan. Dr. Gaynor, welcome back. Oh, it's great to be with you, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Uh, should we be surprised by these findings, and what do you think is the mechanism here? Uh, not at all surprised, and uh, the mechanism uh, for sleep disruption has been described over the years, uh, but this study really looked at people who went to bed late habitually, and that really does throw off certain hormone levels, particularly cortisol, and it makes you more likely to snack later at night, uh, negative habits, maybe smoke an extra cigarette, and cortisol makes you something called insulin resistant. So the people that stayed up late as opposed to early risers, uh, they had a twofold increased incidence of diabetes and a threefold increased incidence of decreased muscle mass, which predisposes to diabetes. Wow. Uh, isn't cortisol typically referred to as the stress hormone? Where, are the, where these people be experiencing greater levels of stress? And does melatonin have anything to do with this? Uh, melatonin uh, most certainly does, and uh, when you stay up late, uh, it actually affects melatonin levels, and melatonin, your whole endocrine system is linked, so that also affects the cortisol levels, uh, and they're all involved uh, in insulin sensitivity. So if your body is not sensitive to insulin, it has to make more insulin, and you become insulin resistant. And what that does is, is it raises uh, certain uh, growth factors like insulin-like growth factor. Those cause a host of inflammatory problems and uh, really does predispose you to a variety of other health problems such as diabetes, muscle wasting, premature aging, even cancer. And, and, and melatonin is the, it's the hormone that the body produces in response to darkness to tell us to go to sleep. Correct me if I'm wrong, please, here. And, and it's a powerful antioxidant. And it, I, I understand that you've used it in your, in your oncology practice uh, to help prevent people from, from getting cancer. Do I have that right? Yes, absolutely. There are studies that uh, show how important melatonin is, not only in regulating the sleep cycle. So if you're staying up late, uh, you may want to try some melatonin to try and get to bed a little bit earlier, get seven to eight hours of sleep per night. Uh, but melatonin also does have some cancer preventative effects. And even in uh, patients that are receiving chemotherapy, uh, some studies have shown, especially in lung cancer, that additional melatonin uh, can be a valuable adjunct. Is this something that is uh, just universally human, or does staying up late and getting up late affect men and women differently? Or do, are uh, people of different it, ages, for that matter, as well? Uh, it affects uh, everybody uh, pretty much uh, the same. Uh, men tend to be affected by it a little bit more in this particular study. Uh, but the interesting thing is it's not the total sleep duration uh, because people that uh, habitually uh, rise earlier, uh, they don't have uh, the same problem with diabetes, muscle wasting, and things like that. So it probably does have to do with the melatonin uh, and cortisol axis. Uh, and those types of hormones, like I said, uh, they regulate stress, they regulate insulin sensitivity. There's another hormone that has to do with diabetes made by fat cells, and it's called leptin. And leptin is known as the hunger hormone. It makes you feel full. So if you're leptin insensitive, if you don't respond well to it uh, through lack of sleep, uh, you're just always hungry, and that makes you diabetic. Yeah, and that's uh, also, that's, that's the midnight snack syndrome that you're describing. So what, how do people uh, in the minute and a half we have, or so we have left here, 
how do people practice good sleep hygiene so that you know their melatonin, cortisol, all that, everything is working the way it should be? Um, one of the biggest causes uh, of people having difficulty sleeping is stress. And one of the best stress reducers uh, is to get regular exercise, both aerobic uh, and weight-bearing exercise, at least 20 minutes uh, of aerobic exercise three times a week, 20 minutes of weight-bearing exercise at least three times a week. You want to put a lot of uh, uh, foods that are good for neurotransmitters in the brain in your body. Uh, tree nuts like walnuts, cashews, and almonds contain precursors of tryptophan. Uh, those are important for sleep uh, hormones. And uh, then things that are anti-inflammatory to the brain. We know brain inflammation causes problems with melatonin production. So you want to put foods in your body like turmeric, which is what gives curry its yellow color. Garlic is very good. And resveratrol, which is found in red grapes. Wow, remarkable stuff. Dr. Mitchell Gaynor, it's always a pleasure talking with you, sir. I always learn so much. Thank you so much for dropping by. It's great to be with you again. Thank you. Now, everything you know about night owls and sleep patterns is right 